Jeepers creatures, where do you get those features? Well, as you may have noticed in our first part of this particular Top 5 Scary series, creature features seem to be a behemoth of horror cinema that can't help but rear their terrifying head in all matters of confusing calamity. Whether it's a giant anaconda at the bottom of an unfortunate lake, or an ancient pagan cult that has desperately been trying to summon their overlord for the past few decades, the capacity in which these terrifying monstrosities can burst onto the screen can vary from feature to feature, and fortunately for us, there's plenty more where that came from. Hello horror fans, what's going on, and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finches. Today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Creature Feature Horror Movies, Part 2. Roll the clip. Ah. Gross. For the curious amongst you though, of course, that scene was from 2001's Jeepers Creepers, which turned an otherwise curious yet jolly song into one of the most terrifying little tunes in horror cinema. And we can use that to illustrate our definition of creature feature, whether it's an alien xenomorph, a great white shark, or a weird ass scarecrow who listens to jazz, as long as the movie is about a terrifying monster, it can pretty much slip into the genre. Also, as we said last time, Honourable mentions to Alien, The Thing, Jaws, whatever. All of them. You know those movies anyway. You don't need me to tell you about them. So on with the show. Kicking off at number five, The Cave, 2005. Save. And no, not of the platonic variety, although admittedly that would make for a pretty damn decent horror movie, and certainly one that is far, far away from the terrors that linger within this particular rocky enclave. 2005's The Cave, on the surface, is a throwaway movie that was torn to shreds by critics following its release, but in many ways, they were kind of wrong. First though, let's get the bad news out of the way. This film is a walking cliche, and it's everything you expect from an early 2000s horror thriller that was still confused by the ever-changing current of the waters of horror cinema. And also, not only that, but yeah, the acting in this movie isn't exactly anything to write home about. That doesn't mean it's not passable though, by no means is it bad, it's just not exactly good. Okay, now that's out of the way, we can talk about the one thing that matters, the creatures in this feature are freaking awesome, and they earn a spot on this list not just for their physical effects and design, but because of their lore. Bear with me. Directed by Bruce Hunt and written by Michael Steinberg and Tegan West, the cave tells a tale of an ancient Romanian abbey deep in the Carpathian Mountains that is lost to the sands of time following a landslide in the 13th century. Fast forward several more centuries and following an illegal archaeological plunder, I guess, it is discovered that the abbey is actually the entrance to a vast, unexplored subterranean cave system. Obviously, in typical, here's a strange entrance, guess we better send some people down there fashion, a crack squad of thrill-seeking cavers, survival experts and scientists are sent into the depths to figure out just exactly what is going on, and as you'd imagine, the deeper they go, the more problems they encounter. Listen, you know how this movie is going to go, but surprisingly, there is some awesome lore behind the cave, and although in many ways a throwaway narrative, it serves to make you think about the forgotten places of our planet. And not only that, but the creatures in this movie are brilliantly designed. Yeah, they're not exactly anything new, but they're still awesome. Oh yeah, Lena Headey's in it too. Bonus points all around, I guess. Swinging in at number four, The Blob, 1988. Oh, oh no, Paul how quickly your fate arrived. And whilst that may be spoilers, guys, just watch the movie and you'll see just exactly what you're missing. Also, I will count the 1958 horror classic of the same name, and whilst the two of them are certainly comprised of the same alien DNA, they can also stand on their own two feet. I mean, if blobs had feet, that is. Either way, I think for the sum of its parts, although it is a close call, the 1988 version of The Blob is a superior movie, so we'll be focusing on that one in this respect. Written and directed by Chuck Russell, with a writing credit from Frank Darabont himself, The Blob, of course, does exactly what it says on the tin. And it's because of its iconic approach to horror that it cements itself here, really. In many ways, The Blob is exactly what we mean when we say creature feature. This movie is literally about a giant, amorphous, acidic, amoeba-like organism rolling around town and devouring and dissolving anything in its path. Yeah, 
Guys, don't lie, that's all you wanted from this list, right? And thankfully for us, this film delivers exactly that in gelatinous spades. It tells the tale of the sleepy town of Arborville, California, where unbeknownst to its residents, what appears to be a meteorite crashes in a field that harbours a strange and massive slimy substance. And obviously, it's not long before one of the town's miscreants goes meddling with the crash site, unleashing upon the town all of its blobby chaos. You see, whilst this is technically the entire crux of the movie, unlike the 1958 original, the remake of The Blob actually attempts to tie together a few loose ends, giving a much more consistent air of plausibility to this film that frankly serves to complement the horror experience as a whole, and it has a great ending too. 1988's The Blob was a box office flop, and it was cast aside as an unnecessary remake, but I say forget that noise because it's got all of the components for a fantastic creature feature, just with more and more for suffocation and more dissolvement of limbs. Everyone's a winner. Next up at number three, Attack the Block, 2011. Okay, now although this film is certainly in the remit of a horror comedy. It's so unique in its approach and so fantastically well done that you'd be forgiven for not sitting down purely with the intention of laughing for an hour or so. Yeah, this movie is funny for the most part, and yes, its dialogue is quicker than a rat up a drainpipe, but it's also a frighteningly effective creature feature, and it's a demonstration of just how versatile horror and its many subgenres can be. And also, this movie is just fun. And you can't really say that about many films of the early 2010s. Written and directed by Joe Cornish in his directorial debut role, and yes, this guy would go on to direct Ant-Man and Star Wars, Attack the Block tells the tale of a young nurse named Samantha Adams, a resident of Wyndham Tower Block in central London, and yes, the connection to John Wyndham's Attack of the Triffids is certainly not lost on this film, I hope. You see, Samantha, played by the remarkable Jodie Whittaker, who carries this movie effortlessly alongside her young cast, is mugged by a gang of teenagers just Pest, Dennis, Jerome, Biggs, and their leader, Moses, played by the fantastic John Boyega, but she is quickly able to escape when, fortunately for her, a meteorite falls from the sky and crashes into a nearby car. Sensing a theme here. Of course, in the meteorite is a strange, seemingly extraterrestrial creature, and then we have all the bones for the next 90 minutes of brilliantly orchestrated chaos. Start to finish, this film is enthralling in its approach, as the ramshackle gang of survivors seemingly put aside their differences in a matter of saving the planet from assured alien destruction. Obviously, that was a little bit of a hyperbole, because this film is so impeccable British that it's a feat in and of itself. Yeah, just put together a group of people who certainly shouldn't ever run headfirst at a ravenous alien creature while swinging a baseball bat, but then do it anyway, and you can pretty much understand exactly what this movie was aiming for. It's great. Coming in at number two, Relic, 1997. Seven decapitations in one week. Don't you just hate someone who only takes head and never gives it? You're bad, Matilda. Real bad. Alright guys, we've covered this one in quite a few honourable mentions before, and I saw quite a few of you calling for its place in this list in our last video, so yes, certainly, I oblige. 1997's Relic is an awesome movie, with an awesome monster, and if you haven't yet seen it, you certainly should. Also, that scene that we just played, starring Audra Lindley as Dr. Zwizik, is probably one of the finest throwaway scenes in 90s horror. Seriously, the acting clout in that scene is something to be admired, and then she's pretty much just never seen again. If that doesn't sum this movie up, then I'm not sure what will. Directed by Peter Hyams and based upon the 1995 novel of the same name by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child, it tells a tale of Dr. Margot Green, played by Penelope Ann Miller, an evolutionary biologist stationed at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Here, during her application for a new research grant, she stumbles upon the new research of an anthropologist, Dr. John Whitney, who was seemingly disappeared after studying a tribe out in South America. Part of this research is a strange stone statue depicting a creature known as the Kothoga, a mythical forest monster. And then suddenly people start losing their heads over all manners of museum based capers, I guess. Obviously there's a lot more to it, but also obviously I don't want to spoil too much, because surprisingly the relic has a lot to offer in terms of narrative, and for an often overlooked creature feature, at the very least it's an incredibly well made horror mystery. At the start it plays out as a whodunit, wait, what's this weird fungus thing, why are people losing their brains, and then BAM! 
creature feature. And obviously, the most important reason, the reason you clicked on this list, the aforementioned creature of the feature, is brilliant. And for those of you that have already seen the relic, you'll know how frighteningly effective the Cathoga actually is. Yeah, this film is surprisingly intelligent in all the right places, and if you're in the mood for a ravenous frenzy of popcorn with more than a few eyebrow raises, the relic is certainly not one to be missed. And finally, coming in at the horn spot, Rogue, 2007. Neil, she's frozen! Get her moving! Wow, this film, holy sh**. I was a little late to the party when this movie first came out, but following the success of Wolf Creek and hearing very good things, I had to poke my head once again into the beautiful yet horrifying swampy billabongs of Australia. If you know this channel well, you know that I have a quiet reverence for the fantastic horror entries that have emerged from Australia over the past few decades, and truly, Rogue is one of them. The first and most important point of this entry is that Rogue is an underappreciated classic in its own right, particularly when it comes to creature features. On this list, we've had ancient subterranean demons, giant amorphous acid blobs, phosphorescent space glow stick monsters, ancient South American chimeras, and then this, a saltwater crocodile. And believe me, that saltwater crocodile is more terrifying than all of them combined. And the second most important point, it encompasses one of the most important motifs that Australian horror cinema has nailed to near perfection the fear of the natural world. Also, you'll be forgiven for piping up about the other 2007 Australian crocodile horror, Black Water, which is a damn fine movie, but yeah, this one is far better. Written and directed by Greg McLean, the man responsible for 2005's Wolf Creek, Rogue tells a tale of a group of tourists on a crocodile-watching river cruise in Kadaku National Park, part of Australia's Northern Territory, led by charming wildlife researcher Kate, played by Radha Mitchell. After winding up for the day and taking her cruise back before darkness falls, the tour spot a flare from up in the river. Oblige to go and see if someone needs rescuing, something hits the boat from beneath the water, and then we're off. Rogue. Listen, Jaws is uncomparable as a horror movie. It's brilliant, but Jaws is to sharks as Rogue is to crocodiles. Really, it's that good. And part of the success behind this creature feature is that the crocodile looks so damn real, and the physical effects behind Rogue are nearly flawless. Also, talking of real life, this movie is based on a real life crocodile named Sweetheart, a giant male saltwater crocodile who attacked boats in Australia in the 1970s. Nightmare fuel. Well, there we have it, horror fans. That list for the top five scariest creature feature horror movies. Part two. Whew, that was a good one. Well, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? How many more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Joseph Wilson says, Oi, bring Agatha back. Hey, I know, man. I know. I hear you. I miss her too. Agatha is a force of nature, dude. If she comes back, we're blessed. If not, we were blessed to have known her. Either way, you know what I always say, never piss off a witch. Clay Talman says, Jack, why don't you just do a top five comedy horror films? We have. Go and check it out. It's one of my favorite lists. And finally, David Rosales says, Zydrate comes in a little glass vial, in a little glass vial, in a little glass vial. Well, there we have it, folks. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, please be a dear, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.